to another router guides video. My name is Humphrey Chung. In this video, we're going to take topology zero with our two routers and two loopbacks. We're going to do something interesting, and that is setting the same MAC address on both sides of the interface of the fast zero zero interface right here, the link between R1 and R2. Going to set both sides to the same MAC address, and then we're going to see if we are able to ping each other. Uh, I haven't done this yet, but I'm going to guess that these routers will not be able to ping each other after we set the MAC address to the same thing on both sides. So I've got my IP addresses already set. I've got my loopbacks already set, although we really don't need loopbacks in this. I'm going to pull in router 1. And router 1's right there. Going to go into the interface first. Or actually, before I do that, let's do a show ARP. Show ARP shows that we have an IP address. This is us. And we have a hardware address of that. Notice I do not have 10.10.12.2 in my table, and that's because I haven't actually tried to go to R2. But I can solve that by going ping 10.10.12.2. The ping is successful. Now if I do a show ARP, I now have the address 10.10.12.2 in my ARP cache right there, and its corresponding MAC address. All right, now I'm going to change the MAC address on FAST00 on R1, I simply go into the interface, then MAC dash, hit tab, and when I do a question mark there, you can see that it's asking for the MAC address in three sections. H means it's hexadecimal. So I do four A's, four A's, and four A's right there. Hit enter. My interface is going to go through a reset. You can see the interface is changed to up. Now when I exit out, I'll do a show ARP, and you can see now in my ARP cache right here, it is saying that I am hardware address of all A's, all A's, and all A's. Let's see if I can still ping the other side. I should still be able to, 10, 10, 12, 2, and we have a successful ping. Just to verify things, I'm going to bring in R2, and we'll do a show ARP right there. Enable show ARP, and you can see I've got 10, 10, 12, 1, which is the other side. That's fast 0, 0 on R1, and I can ping 10, 10, 10, 12, 1, which is good. Okay, so now the moment of truth, I am going to change the MAC address on R2. Conf T, int fast 0, 0, MAC dash, MAC address, all A's, all A's, and all A's. Type enter, exit out, hit the up arrow a couple times. The ping worked before, but will it work now? It does not. Look at that. So as soon as I change the MAC address to all A's, we have a failure in the ping. I'm going to quickly bring in R1. Let's try the ping again from R1. Hit the up arrow. Remember it worked before, and you could see it right there. Just a couple seconds ago it worked. Now the same ping will die. Hmm, pretty interesting. Now let's move router 1's console window over. I'm going to go to router 2. I'm going to start a debug, debug IP packet. So my debug is running. Fire the ping up again. And you'll see that router 2 isn't even getting the ping packet at all. Nothing is happening. Because if I were getting the ping packet on router 2, things would be flying up the screen. But is that really happening? Are the packets and frames dying? Well, we know that a packet isn't hitting us, but what about a frame, a raw Ethernet frame, or an ARP request? Well, let's actually try show ARP on router 2, and you can see that we just know about ourselves here. Okay. Let's run another debug, debug ARP. You bet you probably haven't used that before, debug ARP. Go to R1. Hit the up arrow ping 10, 10, 12, 2. Let's see what happens now. Fire up the ping. Nothing's happening. Hmm, pretty interesting. But let me clear the ARP cache on router 1 because if I do a show ARP right there, you can see in my ARP cache, it still thinks that 10, 10, 12, 2 belongs to the old MAC address. It's pretty interesting. Hmm. Let me clear the ARP cache, and I could do that by doing clear ARP. And you can see as soon as I did clear ARP, over here on router 2, because I have the debug turned on, it says ARP filtered. It's coming from 10.10.12.1. 10, 
with the MAC address of all A's and all A's. Reason it's filtered is because it's our address. It thinks that that's us. So the router gets a little bit confused and says, well, I'm just going to ignore that ARP request. I'll run the ping again. Ping 10, 10, 12, 2. I hit the ping. Go over here on R2 and you can see for pretty much each ping I get this. ARP request filtered. So it's killing the ARP request because it thinks it's our address. So it gets a little confused and says, well, that's me. So I'm just going to ignore or filter out that ARP request. So we are getting the Ethernet frame. Layer two, we are getting the frame, except the frame is getting nuked out. And then what happens is the layer three doesn't transfer the information to layer three or layer two doesn't transfer the information to layer three. And that's why when we ran the debug IP packet, nothing showed up. It's being killed on a lower level. And the whole reason for that is because both sides think that their MAC address is all A's. Well, both sides are set to all A's. And what happens is the routers basically think they're talking to themselves and they drop the ARP request. So no real connection is formed and Basically, connection's dead in the water. You can't ping at all. RIP won't work. Any routing protocol won't work, and you're just toast. But I can get it all back as soon as I change the MAC address to something different. I'll go into R2, interface fast 00, zero and watch this. I'll do a MAC address, all A's, all A's, all A's, except I will put a B at the end. Boom. Go back to R1, I ping. Ping is successful, it's awesome, life is good. Okay, so there you have it. If you set both sides of a link to the same MAC address, you could see right there that your connection will die. Thanks for watching.